So the last speaker in this um, in this so far really interesting block, thank you for joining, um, is Jochen. Uh, Jochen has um, a lot of opinions about the OpenStreetMap data model, and he's going to share the latest ones <laughs> um, with you today. So uh, please, um, a hand for Jochen, and um, there you go. Thank you, Martijn. Um, right, I'm uh, talking again, again about uh, evolving the OSM data model, um, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. When, I, when, I, when I'm talking about OSM data model, what I'm talking about is that, that nodes, the ways, the relations, the, how we store coordinates, um, that we have tags, that we have versions, change sets, that, that's, that's what I mean with data model. Um, what I'm, what I'm uh, not going to talk about is the details of tagging, the stuff that you heard in the, in the last talk about um, uh, which exact tag to use for that thing or that other thing that's uh, pretty much outside the scope uh, of what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later on, uh, but you'll see. Um, so um, the OSM data model uh, has uh, been around, that, that we use now has been around for a long time. There were a few changes in the beginning. Um, you can see here the a a API versions in, in 2000, 2007, there were some changes, uh, and then in 2009, but since then we basically have not changed anything about uh, the, sort of the underlying um, uh, uh, data model that Stratum that we all built upon. And um, that uh, begs the question of whether this is all so perfect that we didn't have to change anything. And I think that's rather unlikely um, that a fast moving project like OSM, um, uh, that you couldn't find anything to make it better uh, in, in, in more than a decade. Um, I've, I've been talking about this, we have been talking about this for a long time. The um, wiki page for, AP, for the API uh, 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 0 0.7 was created in December 2009, so in the same year the, the last version uh, was released, and since then um, we have talked about it, but we haven't done anything. Um, I have talked about this um, already in 2013. I've talked about uh, areas that we want to have areas or polygons or something as a, as a, a proper data type. Um, I have talked about it uh, not too far from here in Milano uh, at the uh, Stato map in, in uh, 2018 that I want to change things. Um, and I'm talking about it here again. There's a lot of issues. There's um, many, many things that people have proposed uh, that we could change or that we might want to change. And there's a lot of ideas uh, floating around, but there's not a clear understanding sort of exactly what the scope is um, or for all the different issues, what exactly uh, people want to change. And everybody has their pet projects and, um, and, and ideas there. And, and I'm, I'm no exception, obviously. I have also lots of pet projects in, in, that, in that area. Um, so while we have talked about it, we have not done anything, and I, that, and I think that's just because OSM has been so successful, we um, didn't have the time to step back and think about this in a, in a more structured way, and, and, and then actually mount a project that, uh, a, a bigger project like that, that, that will actually change things. So we've always put these big picture ideas uh, to the side, and, and I think uh, we should stop doing that. We should tackle this now. Um, in the spring of this year, the EWG, that's the engineering working group of the OSMF, uh, has uh, commissioned me to write a study. So they paid me some money, not yet, but I hope I got it. Uh, um, yeah, it depends on the study. So um, uh, to to write this uh, to write this study, um, to basically write down sort of what I've been thinking about, what the community has been. Uh, uh, um, discussing um, and sort of figure out what might be possible changes, what 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 could be sort of the scope of of, of any changes they, that you want to do, and and have at least a sort of a rough outline of a plan that might someday bring us there. Um, so this is not a sort of finished thing in any shape or form. This is sort of a first step. A, a, to, to give me some time to think through everything, to write down something, then so that we can have a discussion um, 
on on all of this. Um, that is that is not sort of free floating. Everybody pulling in different directions so to start to organize our thoughts around this. Um, the, the paper is written for a technical audience. Um, this is this is something where you really have to be familiar with all the details of um, the the OSM data model. Um, I I tried and I have a bit of a sort of background in, in the beginning where I try to write some down some background information to make it easier to understand. But it's not something if you have never seen any details of how nodes ways work or all these kind of things that that, it, that would be easy to understand. Um, but um, it, the, the reason for that is also that sort of the average mapper should not be concerned with any of this. And my goal for this is that the average mapper will never see the changes. They'll have to install a new version of the software maybe, or these kind of things, but um, um, they should not see a big difference in their day-to-day -day mapping and also the data users. For them, it should be simpler maybe, but uh, not hugely different. Um, and that's a tall order, of course. I mean, we have to work, work on our tools and, and, and to make, make all of that possible. Um, as I said, this study should be the start of the discussion. That's the idea, is to have something so that we can say, I disagree with Jochen writing down on page 17, this thing, that's totally wrong, we have to do it differently. Um, it's important that you have something to start the discussion from, I think, and, and, and this is, is what it should be. So th this is a quick outline of the study, a bit of introduction, a bit of background that talks about uh, nodes, ways, and these kind of things, uh, defines some um, uh, uh, um, uh, words and, and talks a bit about the simple feature model, for instance. We've heard that from uh, Brendan in his, his talk, how important that is in the GIS world. Um, then I have a list of sort of more or less unsorted list of lots of issues that came up over the years with the current OSM data model. Um, many of them from my own experience, others from experience from other people who are doing lots of different things, being it creating maps or routing or whatever it is. Um, and what issues they came up with that they had problems with. Um, and this is just sort of to bring out the issues uh, that there are um, without um, starting the discussion, uh, whether that's important or not so important and on all these things, just, just so that we can see what sorts of problems people have. And then uh, the uh, fourth chapter has a bit of more discussion and possible improvements of some of uh, the issues, other issues I have more or less ignored because maybe I don't have a good idea how to solve them. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so, uh, and, and then I'll, I'll propose some next step and a uh, phase plan how we could um, first have a uh, discussion. Well, I, I'll get into the phases a bit um, and um, uh, how to move this forward, a bit about the software and systems that need to change. Um, yeah, so here, th th those are the issues that um, uh, that that I have written down something about. Uh, I, I'll not go into detail in, into all of these, and uh, feel free to to ask me questions. And obviously, feel free to look into the study and and read about uh, the details. I'll I'll highlight a few of those uh, in a minute. Um, again, I want to mention this is still obviously somewhat subjective. I collected this. Um, other people would have come up with different kinds of lists. I've been uh, uh, working with OSM data for a long time, so I think I've seen a few things, uh, but I'm sure there are others, and uh, this does not mean this list is uh, the end-all, be-all. Um, please, if you have other issues, um, uh, talk to me and talk to others and, and uh, uh, to move this forward. Um, some of the issues that came up, I considered to be out of scope, really, of this thing, if it goes too far into tagging, for instance. Um, for some, we just don't have any solution. There's, people would like a pony, but we can't deliver that. I have no idea how to do that. So um, maybe we should stick to those things where we have a, at least a vague idea how to actually implement them. Um, and some ideas would change, in my opinion, OSM in such a fundamental way um, that I don't think that's something we want. We still want this open tagging and, and a lot of things that make OpenStreetMap great. Um, 
So um, not too many changes and not too fast. Obviously, this is still an evolution and we have to find sort of what, what is the, the most important thing to work on, what could be the next steps, and then we can see where we are and, and develop uh, from there. Um, uh, but yeah, we can still discuss, uh, obviously, any, any uh, idea that, that's out there. So first I'm going to talk a few issue, uh, about a few issues I have not solved uh, or nobody has solved yet where we don't have a good idea how to solve them. Um, one is uh, object identity uh, that comes up a lot is um, how can we have stable IDs, how can we want, have we, uh, an object, that, be it a, a restaurant or something, and that would never change its ID as long as this restaurant exists. Uh, so this is a very uh, request we see very often. Um, um, but I think it needs a, a lot of large changes to our thinking, our data model, and I don't think we are prepared to do that. It, it, we, we have a very different ID, idea of what an ID is compared to, for instance, Wikidata, which starts out with an, with an idea of this, this object, um, uh, the, this real world object, while we um, are not really working with real object, we're working real world object, we're working with geometric objects. All our objects are basically sort of some kind of geometry that that is connected or part of or uh, stands for a real world object. But that's that that's a bit different. Um, and uh, also, the the different people asking for the stable ideas, they have different ideas for what exactly they want. So this is something I think that needs more discussion before we can solve that. Um, and I think. Many can many of those the problems can be solved with tags, so maybe that's not something um, uh, that that we can solve now. Um, which brings me to the tags. I um, th th this 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 comes all up all the time. Of course, um, tags are uh, getting more and more complicated. We have seen the last uh, two talks in this session. We we're already talking about this, um, and. Uh, there's always a question of whether tags should have some more structure to them in some way, shape, or form, and it's unclear what that is. So um, there's many, many issues here. So start, tag, start date is a tag that describes basically when, um, when, when an object came into being or something, but it's unclear exactly what it refers to. Does it refer to the object as a whole or only some of the data? What happens if one tag changes, if a restaurant changes its name, does its start date also change, or do we have then a amenity, restaurant, start date, name, tag, or something. Uh, similar, the problem with check date or survey date from uh, when did we last look at this object and, and, and uh, did a check on it, whether it still exists and is, is correct. Did, did we check the position or the tags or all of them? Or um, We have uh, an issue with the opening hours, which have, uh, have this huge complex um, structure in them, um, which is hard to parse, and it's kind of ad hoc. It's something we have only for, oh, this, this special thing, this special format we only have for the opening hour stack, everything else is using something else. Um, every, everybody, every tag has their own structure. Um, we have uh, complicated um, keys, uh, like here, uh, generator, output, electricity, that's all in the key, that's not a value. Uh, so we put more and more structure in the keys, also not, on the, not only the value. Um, and in, with the, the um, lane-based mapping, when you say we have a road here and then there's each lane we map differently and we have this. This is getting more and more complex. Um, and we have, at some point, we have to decide whether our simple key value as string tag model is enough um, to, to, um, to model all of this. Um, so the simplicity, I think, of the OpenStreetMap data model, the simplicity of the uh, nodes, ways, relations, and tags hides that there's a lot of complexity in the tags that is there um, and we don't really acknowledge because we like this, anybody can tag anything so much. And it has, has brought us here. So there is some, obviously some, some, some good part in that. Um, uh, Sarah Hoffman and Richard, are, uh, later after the uh, coffee break in this uh, room, are, are gonna talk about some of uh, the tag issues too. So um, if, you, if you think about the data model of OSM, we have the, the sort of the, the strict part down below uh, the structured part with nodes, uh, ways, relations, ideas, this kind of thing, and then we have the flag, flexible stuff up there with the tags, and maybe maybe the line should be somewhere else. Maybe we could put a little bit of structure in the tags. I'm not sure. Maybe relations are in the wrong point because relations are also quite flexible and, and quite often too flexible. If you want, to, if, if you're using them, you know how hard it is to uh, to get the data out of there. And 
Um, these are sort of the crude drawings I could have come up with to illustrate my point here, and I don't even know how to how to better visualize the structure or need not missing structure or, or something that, that we're talking about here. So this is still a big open issue, and we should have more discussions about that. Um, so some of the issues I think are sort of solved. It's not like they're finished now, but um, we have, I think, a good understanding of how we can approach this. Um, uh, so one of the biggest problems, I think, or the biggest problem with OSM is the relationship between objects. So nodes are part of ways, ways are part of relations, relations can be part of uh, themselves in the worst case. Um, uh, and um, this makes working with OSM data hard uh, and computationally expensive. Uh, we need a lot of RAM uh, if you want to look up the data. Um, uh, in, in a reasonably fast fashion. Um, we can't just stream the data and work on each object alone. We have to keep a, some kind of database, some kind of file or something um, uh, to relate one, one data, piece of data to another. And that's, that's a big problem. Um, and we have to solve that. Um, objects in OSM are always related by location. I mean, we are a geo database, um, but they're also related by ID. And these two things, um, they, they make things more complicated to have, to have uh, both of them. Um, and, and this is, I think, something we have to solve. I want um, to be able to have on my laptop the whole OSM database and do something useful with it. Um, every student should be able to just use their own computer and doesn't have to rely on AWS or uh, whatever to uh, compute the data or some intermediary. Um, they should be, everybody should be able to download the OSM data and, and, and work on it. And this gets increasingly more difficult uh, uh, as our data, the amount of data grows. Um, nowadays, if you want to work with the planet for most uh, things you want to do, you need 64 gigabyte RAM or, or 128 gigabytes of RAM, otherwise it's not going to work. And this is not something that maybe an activist uh, 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 somewhere um, does have on their second hand and down computer or so. So I, I think um, this is the most important thing to solve. If we remove untagged nodes, so nodes are used for two things, um, sometimes for points of interest, so this is a restaurant or uh, uh, whatever it is, um, also, or uh, to, uh, as, uh, to, to, to sort of lend their location to the ways and to the relations. And if, um, if we remove the more than 95% of the nodes that are only used for their location and not for their identity in reality, um, and give those uh, locations to the ways, we can solve a lot of these problems. Um, the other big advantage of that is that processing um, changes in the OSM data becomes much, much simpler and much, much more intuitive. Um, if a way, if, if something in a geometry, in the geometry of a way changes nowadays, you don't see the change in the way, you only see the change in the node, and that, that's a big problem. Um, the next thing uh, people have been asking for for a long time, I've been asking for for a long time, some kind of area data type, um, uh, that, so an area that is a, a closed area, a polygon, or however you want to, uh, to, to name it. Um, and um, I think we have good ideas how to solve that. If we, if we move the, the node locations to the ways, then basically we just have to have another type of way that's always closed and where we make sure um, it's always, always valid. That's easy to do for small areas. For larger areas where we use uh, multiple polygon relations at the moment, it's a bit more complicated, um, but I have some uh, ideas there too, which I'm not going to go into now. Um, uh, uh, just for time reasons. Um, as I said, these are large changes to the data model. This will change every piece of software that would, that works with OSM data will have to change. Um, of course, we will think about and we'll need some kind of way of moving over so, you, so we convert the data into the old format so people can use it for a while and all of that. Um, but um, in the end, it is a big change uh, for everybody, um, for every developer and everybody who's um, um, 
who works with, with the data closely, but normal users will not see much change. The editors should hide all these changes uh, from the users. Um, when, and, and as I mentioned, it should be, if anything, should be more easy to understand for users, especially around changes, uh, because the things that you think about change uh, and, uh, and not some other node that's hidden somewhere. Um, oh no, that was going to end if you do that. Um, um, I, 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 I've been running around for years um, selling OSM to lots of people, explaining what OSM is and how great OSM is. And one point was always, is we don't even, we don't just have all these uh, random lines and nodes and uh, lines and points somewhere. We have actually a connected uh, data model with a topology where everything that should be connected is connected and you can do um, routing on, on top of that and this is so great and nobody else can do that. Um, turns out I was wrong. Um, this is not the end of the world. I mean, it might, end of the world might come, but not because of this. Um, editors can handle this. So if you have two routes crossing, um, it's already, we don't have a node at that point. If we, if we move, um, uh, uh, let's say, the, uh, uh, a border, we have, we have a border line and we move the point around, um, the editor can make sure that all the points uh, on, on ways that use the same point that they move together with that. That's an, what an editor can do when it already does that. Um, so um, this, this kind of snapping thing that uh, that if you move one node, everything that's connected to the node moves with it. The editor can still do that. That's no problem at all. Um, and uh, it turns out the routing engines have to build their routing graph anyway from OSM data and throw away a lot of the nodes that are only connected in two directions um, because they're not interested in that for their actual routing graph. They don't need that. Um, so um, yeah, we're not really really losing anything. So um, how is this how is this uh, going to move forward and what, what's going to happen here? So the EWG, um, so that they, as I said, they commissioned me with that study. They can decide what they want to do with it and whether they want to pay pay it and think it's good enough. Um, uh, did, they just got it on Monday. So um, um, so. The, the stuff that I'm proposing here is just a pro proposal for me. It's not in non, no way official from the OSMF or anything. Um, and we still have to figure out um, how we want to move forward there as a, as a community. So my idea is we have a sort of four phases. First one is a community consultation. Um, so we talk, and this is sort of already part of that. Talk to as many people as possible. Listen to as many people as possible. Um, you have to tell me or us, we have to discuss that. What are all the problems? Did we solve them in the right way? Figure out, figure out these details, what we want to actually um, change, what we say we're gonna push for later, what we wanna actually do in, in, this, kind of pro in, in this project now. And then uh, the OSMF has to come to a decision whether I, at the end of the phase one, whether they actually want to move forward with that, um, allocate the uh, um, funds for that, and uh, and then we can go in phase two in the detailed planning where we figure out all the bits and bytes and how, how the format should look and all of that. Um, and uh, and also start building libraries and documentation and all that so that in, in phase three, people can actually change their software, move over, and um, and we can have the, the changeover at the end of phase three and then um, sort of mop up a follow-up after that, figure out where the problems are and, 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 and fix them. Um, I've already talked about that. So um, uh, this is a huge project. If we're going to undertake that, it, it's going to take a while. I would say two to three years. Um, and uh, and uh, it's going to need some money. Um, this did not happen the last 10 years because there was nobody who, who had uh, the, the funds to do that or the time to do that. And time and funds is sort of correlated. So we need some kind of project management. We need some kind of a, a technical uh, lead. We need uh, community relations and talk to all the people who are using the OpenStreetMap data in one shape or form. 
um, how it works for them. You have to pay a little bit for servers, for cutoff, we need a few more for that time and all that. Um, and we also have to think about that some projects, uh, like the editors or so, might need extra support uh, to help them uh, implement all these things. Um, so the very next step is there's going to be a buff session tomorrow. Um, so everybody here uh, is invited to come there and um, there we can discuss all the details um, uh, of this. And uh, uh, we have to remember this is an evolution. It's not a revolution. It's an evolution is one step and there will be other steps behind it once we have figured out as a community how to uh, actually mount a bigger project like this. Uh, I think we can do it again and do more and more changes as time goes on. We don't have to do everything in this one project. Let's figure out sort of what, what are the next things are and, and, and do them. Um, yeah, here's some links. So if, if you want to be connected to the project, the GitHub uh, 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 repository will, uh, does have a little bit of information um, and we'll have some more and then we'll have to figure out still where exactly this, the discussion is going to be and all that and we'll figure that out together with the EWG and, and uh, tomorrow and the buff. Thank you. Thanks, Johan. Good. This, this, um, this talk has um, inspired quite a few questions online. I'm not going to go through all of them since we are almost at coffee break, but I, I propose we go a little bit into coffee break time because I'm sure there's going to be a few questions from the audience as well. Um, so the, the first one, <laughs> first one is, should we, should we skip 0.7 and go straight for 1.0? What is lacking for a 1.0 release? For me, that's just numbers, but um, the change is big enough to warrant a 1.0, I would say. I have a question from the audience. Uh, Jochen, this is maybe a, a, a bit of a naive question, but what's, what role does uh, the, the expected lifespan of Ruby on Rails play into all of this? Are we going to be looking at a shift in the, the underpinning software at some point that should also be considered? Um, that is certainly something we have to think about this. Uh, we, uh, we have um, sort of a big part of the API is implemented twice in Ruby and Rails and in the CGI map. Uh, and uh, if we want to do a bigger change, the question is there, does it make sense to implement that twice? Um, and I don't have an answer for that. That's certainly something we have to, to think about and discuss, yeah. I have another one. Um, from the online audience, should the, should the new API, in your opinion, include a check for valid geometries? Uh, should uh, we have a check for valid geometries? Yes, I think that's important. Um, and if you can make it cheap enough, then we should do that. And that's part of, uh, I, I talk about that in, in several places in the paper. Um, so please read the, the, the details there. And yeah, I think we, we should do that if you can. Okay. I think I think I saw Ilya's hand up first before uh, for all those others. So I'm going to give the mic to you. Uh, thanks. Uh, interesting talk, Johan. Uh, I haven't read your study yet, but I promise I will. For now, just one question. It's not very simple. Why not take a simple route and instead of changing the data model with all these steps and funding, just run OSM to PGSK once? Uh, OSM to PG scale, it's this tool we'll use. Um, so basically what you, what, what you are asking, if I understand you correctly, we could leave the data model, or we can leave the core of OSM as it is and, and, and tack this all on as a, um, as a thing in the end. Um, Okay, uh, convert wholesale to uh, the simple feature model. Um, my answer for that is um, a lot of what I'm proposing is going in that direction. Um, but there's a lot of things that simple feature model can't do. Um, everything we do, the, all the magic that we do with relations is not something that fits in there, for instance. Um, normal, the normal simple feature model also only talks about geometries and not about 
normally in, in the GIS world, you have attributes, um, fixed attributes and not these, these open tagging model. So that would still be unclear how, how, how that would figure in, in all of that. Um, but yes, I think the simple feature model is something that's used by a lot of people and it makes a lot of sense. So I should stop talking. Um, and it makes a lot of sense. So I think it is going in the right direction, but we have to consider where we are um, and move us there slowly and in, in a way that we can understand, the community can understand and that uh, that makes sense for us. And not just say, okay, we just use all of that and, and, and be done with it. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to do one more from the online and one more from the audience because I don't want to rob you of your entire coffee break. Um, one of the questions I'm paraphrasing here is, are we going to have Z-coordinates, Z like three-dimensional coordinates? No. <laughs> I thought you would have a short answer to that. I so. mean, this is, this is one of those things that gets requested occasionally. The other thing is some kind of time dimension that some people want, and those are things that I believe are sort of too big to tackle for us at the moment, and there's too many things which are unclear, and uh, and it would make uh, using OpenStreetMap or working with OpenStreetMap data a lot more difficult for most of the people who don't need those features. Um, so we have to make sure that uh, the majority of use cases are well supported and efficient, and after we've done that, we can do specialized things. Um, yeah. Maybe in version 2.0 then. Okay, we'll wait for that. Um, one final one from the, from the audience. I'm going to go to you. Um, although projections may mean that this is limited to only a small scale, is rectangle such a common case of closed area that it's worth handling specially, which would also make people make buildings actually rectangular if it goes right into the data model? That's very specialized, and that's certainly something we can think about, but that would be deep sort of in the data model, um, I, would, I would think. Okay, I realize that not all your questions have been answered, but um, I want to thank the audience and Jochen for, for the good interaction here.